And I'm also with my friend, Linda Carrington, a colleague of mine. Alrighty. My name is Lori Chapo Kroger, the founder of CFS Solutions of West Michigan. I would like to share with you the story of my three friends. Molly was a registered nurse. She worked for the Michigan Department of Health. Molly's husband awoke one morning and found her dead next to him in bed. She died unexpectedly of ME-CFS. Everett, he was a social worker until he got sick with chronic fatigue syndrome. He spent the last several years of his life bedbound before dying of complications from chronic fatigue syndrome. He died three days before Thanksgiving. Jill, she took her own life last July because of the pain. But I'm not sure if it was caused by ME-CFS or if it was the emotional pain from the disbelief from her doctors, her friends, and her family. Maybe it was a little of both. Could their early deaths have been avoided if they received proper medical treatment? Probably. Could their lives have been more bearable? Definitely. I was an ICU nurse and worked with a severely ill, but nothing compares to the abuse and the suffering that CFS patients endure. We are the walking dead. Some of us are so close to death that it's like lying in a grave that's already been dug and we're holding on to one strand of grass. Each time a doctor says there is nothing they can do, a shovel of dirt is thrown upon us. Disbelief? Another shovel. Told to exercise more? Another shovel. We are being buried alive. When in crisis, we are afraid to go to the emergency room, and we often don't. MECFS is not listed in the Merck Manual, also called the Blue Book. I'm not sure if it's the same Blue Book, um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's called the Blue Book. <laughs> but if your illness doesn't exist in, or isn't in the Blue Book, then your illness doesn't exist. And if you mention you have chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, you're looked upon as being psychotic and you're looked upon as being a drug seeker. And you're often dismissed without treatment, just verbal and emotional abuse. And getting medical help should not be the hard part. Healthcare providers are at a loss because MECFS is not taught in the medical or nursing school curricula. There's no toolkit. There's not a protocol for chronic fatigue syndrome. And sadly, the only source of knowledge is on the internet, including the misinformation that's on the CDC website. For 30 years, patients have been misunderstood, undertreated, and left to care for themselves. It's often the patients who are taking care of the patients. There's something wrong with that picture. We need to change the lack of knowledge and the stigma that's associated with MECFS. So I ask you to answer these four questions. Some of them were answered yesterday, or you discussed them. What can you do as a panel of advisors for chronic fatigue syndrome to get information about this disease into the medical and nursing school curricula? How can you help get chronic fatigue syndrome in the Merck manual, the other blue book. <laughs> um, can the Medscape CME online course, it's mentioned on the IACFS website, it is out of date and it's no longer active. Can you activate it and update it so physicians have a place to go to learn about MECFS. And you talked about yesterday um, about working with the CDC on updating their website, but I haven't heard a date of when that would happen. And I think you're gonna discuss it today. I would also like that to be answered. Please do whatever you can to make these things happen. It won't take much money, but it can make a huge difference in patients' lives today. 
in memory of Molly, Everett, and Jill. Thank you. Thank you, Lori.